It's just a little thing, a match, and I'm going to show you how to light one. I realize it sounds a little silly for me to give you a lesson on how to light a match, but raise your hand if you grew up in a school and in a time that said, don't play with matches. Unfortunately, now we have generations of adults walking around this country who can't light a friggin' match. And I find that unacceptable. Anyone can light, you know, your, your gas stove on your back porch on a beautiful 4th of July weekend when it's sunny and hot and dry and you got a box full of matches to light that grill to cook your hamburgers on. But when you really need to make that match count and you have just these cheap matches and you got to get that fire going ASAP, we need to know how to use this effectively. So one match, when you light it, gives out about one BTU, or British Thermal Unit, of heat energy. It's a fairly small amount if that burns completely. So when we're using a match to ignite something, we need to work uh, effectively and efficiently and typically quickly. And you might ask, who carries matches anymore? Well, I do for one, but they're good to practice with. And we're gonna look at a few different varieties of matches. But what I love to practice and teach with are these, you know, run-of-the-mill uh, supermarket uh, uh, kitchen matches, right? So you can buy, you know, I think three boxes of these, 300, 300 matches in each box, three boxes of these were like four or five, six dollars. So we can get a lot of matches to practice with. It's a very effective way uh, to use matches and, and practice your skills. Um, but, you know, you'll see it's, that, that's probably... I don't know, just over an eighth inch wide, that piece of wood, a small head on there. These are not strike anywhere matches and they're not waterproof matches. Um, but they're, they're good to work with and, and learn those skills. We're gonna go over how to light a match effectively. So what I see people doing very often is they take their match and they hold it from the bottom and they put it against the striker and push and break the match. Has that happened to you? Partly, that's partly because when matches are made, they take a piece of wood and these are cut down. And the grain of the wood is not taken into account really at all. So you can very easily have the grain of the wood running across a match, which means it's very weak. Right? The strength from the wood comes with running parallel to the grain. So you can see how easily that one broke right there, right? Because I wasn't supporting it and the grain run, ran sort of diagonally this way and it, it split out. So when we're using these cheap matches, and this is one of the reasons I teach with these, we can't count on the strength of that stick. Think of it as the fuel, not structurally, not having structural integrity. So um, what I like to do is instead of holding way back here, and we can see on this one, there's even a knot in here on this one. Um, instead of holding way back here and pushing and expecting that to have any sort of leverage on there, what I do is I hold the base of the match with my thumb and middle finger and put the index finger on the match head itself, right there, like so. And now when I go to strike that, my, my index finger is actually doing the pushing down, but when I strike and that ignites, I can lift the index finger and still have my thumb and middle finger to hold it. The other thing you'll see me do so you'll notice I'm striking down the mat, the box, not up the box. So which way does fire burn? Up, right? So when we, we hold a match and it ignites, if we hold it this way, the fire wants to climb up that way, but there's nothing for it to go to. So it's going to struggle. If we hold it completely upside down, we can potentially almost smother it. So what I like to do is hold a match at somewhat of an angle, maybe about a 45 degree downward angle with the match head down once I ignite it. So you'll see me support the head, hold the base of the match, I strike down, and when I pull the finger away, it's already pointing down for me, right? So then let's talk about what we're lighting. So if we're lighting a backpacking stove or a, a grill, that's one thing with gas in there. But if we're lighting, igniting a teepee structure, a campfire, or newspaper in your fireplace, whatever it is, what I tend to see people do is we sit here, we strike the match, st 
stare at it, watch it go whoosh, and I see people go, <gasps> and then whip it into their fire, most of the time extinguishing that flame in the process. Well, what were you expecting the match to do? We're expecting it to light. So why do we have to strike it and sit here and watch it, the, the thing, right? Instead, get close to what you're igniting. Get close to that teepee structure, close to that newspaper in your fireplace, as close as you can. Know where that match is going. Find that spot. And when we strike, we're going to strike and continue straight to that point and hold it there. When, if, you, if you watch really closely when you strike a match, you'll see it, it flares up. That's that chemical on the tip. And then it sort of burns down a little bit, and that's with a wood catching. So it'll burn down, and then the stable flame is much smaller, and so it starts to climb the match. So you want to be ready, be prepared, and strike, and get the match right into that position immediately. Because if it's under that newspaper or that, that tinder or twigs, we can take advantage of that flare. If we're out here sitting up, it gets wasted. It goes whoosh and comes down. But if we can strike and be underneath whatever it is we're trying to ignite by the time it flares up, we can use that to our advantage. And then it'll burn down, catch the wood, and we can continue to, to work from there. So, put it all together. And we go from there. So, kitchen matches are great to work with. Now these are, you know, your, your kind of run of the mill, average, non-waterproof, non-strike anywhere matches. You can of course get the strike anywhere matches. They they aren't what they used to be. You used to be able to find incredibly flammable, like ignite themselves practically, strike anywhere matches. The ones you find nowadays by and large, I find you can strike them on anything as long as it's the box. So I'm not a big fan of the, the cheap strike anywhere matches that you find. Um, they tend to be a little bit shorter than these and you'll see the head on them is, is sort of two-tone. So um, this is your generic match. But we can also buy waterproof matches. There's a common one, as I have here, sold under the name brand uh, Stormproof, made by uh, Yuko, I believe it is. And you can see there's quite a difference here in terms of the length of the match and even the thickness of the material, as well as the chemical that's on the match. So the advantage to these is they'll withstand a pretty good, strong breeze. They can even get wet and still ignite, or if they're lit and get hit with, say, a big raindrop, the flame may go out, but it'll actually relight itself. You can, you can light these, dip them in water, pull them out, and they'll reignite. And I think the way it works is the, the chemical on here has a lower combustion point than we're used to, than, say, wood does. So even though we cool it a little bit in water, provided we pull it out quickly or it gets hit with that big fat raindrop, it's still hot enough to recombust and so it'll relight. And it looks almost like a mini flare as it burns down. I have found that with these, sometimes you can struggle to get them lit. You'll hear it, you strike it and you hear poof, 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 as it, it keeps trying to light, but it, it struggles. Um, the other thing is once it burns down below the chemical, it, it rarely continues to burn down the wood. So you get a much bigger, very flare-like sort of flame, but once that chemical is gone, it, it kind of dies out. Um, these are substantially more expensive than your regular matches. I think maybe 18 or 24 of these in a little waterproof container. I think it's maybe eight or $12. Um, it's still, you know, relatively affordable, especially if you figure you're, you're staking your life on this. Um, but when you can buy almost a thousand of, of the cheap matches for five dollars, um, you know, they are, they are a little more expensive. So you probably don't want to be lighting every fire with these as much as using them to practice emergency fire making um, or keeping it in your back pocket. The waterproof container is great. Um, it, it's got a threaded cap with a, a rubber O-ring gasket. Um, there's a slot on the outside for your striker or you can, and I would recommend keeping a striker inside where, where it stays dry. Uh, we can, of course, also use something like an old pill bottle, um, whether prescription or over-the-counter pill bottle, um, or like a gum, plastic gum case. 
uh, that seals and keeps our matches inside, whether it's the waterproof ones or not, uh, and, and keeps our matches uh, nice and safe and dry.